hey Luke, did you enjoy the 2019 remake of The Lion King? Uh, well, we have reviewed that movie on our channel, Michael, and I think the answer to that question is a definite no. Well, it's a shame we reviewed it on our channel because we could have timed it perfectly to coincide with the release of The Lion King, what's it called? Mufasa The Lion King or something like that, which I believe or I assume is a prequel. I assume it's not just about his decomposing corpse. Um, so... Generally speaking, I think we can all agree that prequels are the best way to add to a, uh, a franchise. So are you excited? Yeah, I, I do wish that Disney committed like $200 million to it, like an artistic film of just Mufasa's decaying corpse. That would know? be powerful. Yeah, yeah, really push the boat out. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks absolutely shit. Like it looks horrendous, the trailer. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the big thing. The the Because the te- you say it, $200 million, but it looks really bad yeah i mean no wonder they pushed the release date back to uh, december but yeah no uh, it looks horrendous it'll be shit it'll be another like two out of ten movie uh but yeah. it'll gross a billion dollars probably yeah wouldn't it be annoying if it was really good but it just had terrible special effects it won't be really good <laughs> Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that have come out in the near and distant past, we give them a couple of watches and evaluate them beyond first impressions. I'm your host Michael and I'm joined as always by my co-host Luke and this week we are celebrating the 40 year anniversary of the release of the movie 16 Candles. So Luke, why don't you tell us a thing or two about 16 Candles? Sure thing Michael, this is not to be confused uh, with four candles. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Which is which is uh, the the pinnacle of British comedy. Yeah, I I forget who was, who who did that sketch. It was the two Ronnies. That was it. Yes, the two Ronnies, and of course, because four candles sounds like four candles. Yes. Uh, if you say it in an Australian accent, uh, so whenever there's you know a number, uh, and then candles afterwards, you know. Do, do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want? We all make that joke. Four candles or. Four candles, you know. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's the tragedy of every um, British person's uh, childhood. It wasn't people forgetting their birthdays. It was just people saying, uh, "How how many uh how many candles do you want in your cake, Michael? Four? Do you want four candles? Do you want four candles?" To be honest, I don't remember my. Fourth. And they would say it. They'd shove the <laughs> cake in my face. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't remember my fourth birthday, so I don't know if that joke was made. Uh, yeah. Uh, but you apparently have a great memory. Uh, well, yeah, c- kind of a traumatic memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I I went to. See a therapist and I, I uncovered that memory it was quite quite distressing yeah. but it was part of my recovery was uh learning to deal with it okay well at least it was better than sam baker's uh 16th birthday uh yeah that's true yeah because yeah, it was forgotten yeah so 16 yeah. candles uh is a 1984 american coming of age comedy film starring molly ringwald uh oh well let me first say who was <laughs> who it was directed by. Of course, you know who it was directed by. John Hughes, the only guy that made like high school movies in the eighties. Yes, uh, John H- Hughes, and we're going to go through some of his trademarks because this was one of his first movies. Oh, I uh, see. Started yes. him off early. Yes, well, it is actually his directorial debut. Oh wow! Uh, Sixteen Candles. I can respect that. You know, yeah, he knew what he knew what he wanted to do. Yes. Oh, he definitely knew what he wanted to do. Uh, <laughs> Wow, he, nobody has ever known what they want uh, wanted to do more than John Hughes. Uh, that is for sure. Uh, of course, it was also written by John Hughes. Uh, it yes. stars Molly Ringwald. As we it just stars said. John Hughes. Uh, it doesn't. No. Uh, oh. uh, Paul Dooley, Justin Henry, and Anthony Michael Hall, as well mm. as of course John Cusack, uh, who I recognised. Uh, oh wait, is he is he the main? Is he Jack Ryan or whatever? Is no, Jack Ryan? So you you didn't notice him. No, I didn't notice John no. Cusack. No, he's one of the, uh, the nerds, one of the friends of uh, Anthony Michael Hall. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. See, yeah. I never think of him as a nerdy-looking guy. But like... no, I mean he doesn't look really like a nerd, and he looks like he's like really he's a lot taller than uh, Anthony Michael Hall. As oh well. yeah, I can see it in the. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? He's kind of pulling a bit of a goofy face. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, the release date was May the fourth, uh, nineteen eighty-four. Mm-hmm. So we are so close to uh, this movie's forty-year anniversary. Uh, so very close uh, and yeah Michael can you guess what the budget was for 16 Candles well the fact you said it was his directorial debut as it's pronounced um, has me thinking it would logically have been kind of low because I feel like they don't usually give first time directors massive budgets so then you add to the fact that I'm guessing none of the people in this were massively famous I've, there's maybe someone who I've not thought about who would be um, 
But no, I, I don't know. I don't think anyone in this would have been really famous. And no no reason for a high budget. And also it was from the past. So I felt like it must have been really low. But the problem is how low is really low for the 80s? I'm going to go for 2 million. Oh, Michael, uh, you, are, you are less than half. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. It's, actually... it's, always, it's always risky when you get to the really low territory. Yeah, it's 6.5 million. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So sorry about that, pal. Uh, yeah. Uh, and what about the box office? I don't know. Like, that is so... I know that this film is well-known um, and quite culturally prominent, but, you know, there are films that are culturally prominent that haven't done that well. Uh, I'm going to say it made 30... Mm, that seems stupid, but I'm probably wrong, but I'm just going to say it and you're going to bully me, but I'm just going to say 30 million is how much it made at the box office. Do you think it should be higher or lower? I'm interested. I feel like it would be more likely to be higher. Oh, okay. Well, you're wrong. Okay, good. Uh, it's 23.6. So I was actually pretty close, but I was just wrong in my uh, in my assumption about or you know my my theory. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, if you're not wrong in one way, you're wrong in, in another way. Really. Good. Okay. So Michael, tell me, did you like Sixteen Candles? Um. So my main issue is this: this is one of those movies uh, which I'm sure we'll get into this in a moment uh, at some point, where there's the movie in terms of the plot and stuff like that, and then there's also a quite substantial. Um, socio-political question uh to be considered with regards to like what like a particular thing that happens in the movie uh and i don't know if we should maintain the mystery around that of course you were talking about the the uh portrayal of long duck gong no long duck dong of course you know what i actually wasn't th- you know what i completely i completely, i was talking about the whole like um hey you yes. can take my yes, yes drunk okay but anyway basically that's one thing and I feel like I want to talk about that, and I do think that does count against the movie. Um, okay, well, we are going to get into the yes. infamous uh, date rape dialogue. Exactly. But I also just wanted to say that even taking the movie as a whole, um, I, I would say the movie, just everything apart from that, is a bit of a mixed bag in that I thought some of the kind of teenage angst, oh, you know, my life's terrible, was done quite well. And some of like the... I think the child-parent relationship is better... It was pretty good, but I didn't find the romance between What's Her Face and Jack Daniels, <laughs> Jake Ryan, to be particularly well done or compelling. But I think the high school element of her relationship with other people there and with this boy that she likes was pretty underdeveloped. And I was just like, I don't really care about her and J- Jake Ryan. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, you know, Jake Ryan is also a footballer. Uh, like the actor who plays him. No. Or, oh, sorry, I, see, I see what you're saying. So it, it, there, there is a football player called Jake Ryan, yeah. uh, independent. Um, you know, uh, linking it back to the Four Candles joke, he's Australian. Uh, oh, wow. Jake Ryan, yeah. he's, a, he's an Australian goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're right, first and foremost. A, l- a lot of things in this movie are underdeveloped. It's one of those movies you get from 40 years ago, which is a classic, but it's underwritten, uh, underdeveloped. You know, A bit ca- like Greece. Yeah, underdeveloped characters. It, this is better than Greece. Uh, I'll mm. just say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, underdeveloped uh, characters and storylines. And it's just, gen- you know, it's only like 90 minutes long. And you're like, well, there should be more to this movie than, than this. Um, particularly in the relationship between Sam and, and Jake. I, I feel like that is mm. just so, again, underdeveloped to use that word again. But overall, my main takeaway is, of course, this movie, you know, it's trying in some ways to be like a wholesome movie about this girl who has a bad birthday and then things work out for her in the end. Yeah. You had a bad birthday. Yeah, which is nice. Again, kind of wholesome. But this this is a crazy movie, like, because you got a very racist caricature of an Asian guy. Just and it doesn't need to be in this movie at all. And then, Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have, uh, obviously, as we mentioned, date rape dialogue. Yes. Um, which, again, we will get into. And yeah, um, just in general, like this movie, uh, the even the uh, the language, like the word retarded is said like three times, like casually. Yeah. To someone say, oh, maybe I'm... See, I also recently, as preparation, watched the movie The Breakfast Club. And I know in that one, they say fag a lot. Oh, yeah. Do they say fag much in this? Yes. Like, I think they do, because they say like, um, she says you're a fag. But also, yeah, there's racial slurs stereotypes of asian characters which are just you know very racist and yeah okay that's an 80s movie that's an 80s movie uh and then yeah there's uh creepy weird sex dialogue and you know characters uh basically being you know well sexually harassing other characters yeah that these are 80s movies 
uh, sorry, yes. 80, 80 movies tropes. And that's the thing, like, it is a very 1980s movie, but it's just kind of wild to look back on it, like, 40 years later and be like, oh, wow, this was, like, a popular, wholesome movie. And if it came out today, yeah, this yeah. there would be a lot of, well, things were... The crit- loony left would have a field day. Things were criticized at the time when this movie came out, but, you know, it's it's still heralded as a classic. And, of course, Molly Ringwald, you know, uh, you know was incredibly famous after this movie. Uh, she was, mm. you know, even though she had a very bad name. Yes, uh, yes, that is true. That is a Family Guy reference, right? Uh, is it? I actually didn't know that. I uh, like maybe it, maybe it was in the subconscious of my thing, but I just thought like my genuine personal opinion is that Ringwald is quite a bad name. Yeah, because it sounds like ringworm. But yeah, o- obviously you remember the Family Guy uh, Family Guy episode where uh, they go back to the 1980s. Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I thought you were referencing a line from that yeah. episode, of Family Guy. So I'm, yeah, I'm seeing it here. See, what's interesting is I do know that there is another clip from Family Guy, and maybe you remember this, yeah. where um, she, uh, Peter's like, "Thank you for coming to my birthday, Jake Ryan," and then he's, and then basically Jake Ryan rapes him, and he's like, <laughs> "No, not like this." <laughs> yeah. So I was gonna bring that up at the end as well. Okay, that's I'm glad we're all going to talk about the classic Family Guy reference. Yeah, but that's the Family Guy reference, and then of course the other Family Guy reference. Uh, well, the thing is, they mention it when they go back to the eighties. Uh, in Stubby's time machine or whatever is uh, they mentioned Molly Ringwald um, and like she was the biggest star in the mid 1980s which was true she was um, and yeah I thought you were that that what you just said oh but she has an awful name that is something that one of the characters in Family Guy would have said when they went back to the 80s but uh, maybe not maybe you you just came up with that um, no, yeah. Yeah, well I, the thing is I, so I have seen that episode so this could be an example of what they call a cryptonesia which is something that plagiarists uh, invented to explain why they steal other people's jokes. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so yeah, I liked it because of the reasons that I said for, um, you know, it's all, all of these elements, all of these 1980s elements. Um, and it's really fun to look back on them and think, wow, this was just a casual movie released in the 80s. And, you know, today <laughs> it's so out of date. Uh, but yeah, it was, of course, very popular because it, you know, Molly Ringwald, she was a star after this. John Hughes directed many other great movies, but great you know, movies which are very memorable, shall we say. Renowned. Yes, exactly. Uh, in the 1980s, of course. Um, and yeah, he, he did Home Alone as well, right, I believe? Um, yes, he did. I think he wrote Home Alone, but it was directed by Christopher Columbus. Yeah, because it's set in Chicago. So yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, this was a, <laughs> a very big movie for, uh, you know, a few people in this. And of course, it's famous. We're reviewing it 40 years later because it is known as a classic. But yeah, it's just all these... 80s elements and which again are quite weird but I, I like that because overall the story is pretty bad it's pretty underwritten under uh, developed the romance just it's no re- not hitting you where you live there's no reason why Jake Ryan should like Sam mm. and, this is like Twilight and again if they had a conversation and if he was really infatuated with her because mm. oh she's she's different she's not like other girls you know yes um, okay that would make sense but it speaks to how underdeveloped the romance is that I think the first time they talk to each other is when uh, Sam is coming out of the wedding, right? That is that the first conversation they have? Yes, because they have lots of like not conversations where they just kind of look at each other. Yeah. But I don't think they actually do talk to each other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm with you on the fact it means you're kind of like, well, why do they even like each other? Yeah. And the next scene, they're having, you know, the most romantic scene ever where, you know, she's, mm, yeah. she's saying, you know, that, that scene that was parodied by Family Guy. Oh, make a wish, Sam. It already came true. Yeah, okay, like cringe. Even, cringe. Absolute cringe. Yeah, and then, but at least you've got all the racist and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I love Long Duck Dong. He, I'm, I'm glad that you are like Long Duck Dong, because I didn't want to be the only person who likes Long Duck Dong. He is my hero, Long Duck Dong. I yeah. mean, that is the guy I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's pretty, like, honestly, though... You, like the the meme nowadays is that um kind of uh asian men are generally presented as kind of like feminine and weak and like nerdy nah. and blah 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 to be fair in this one he's an alpha he's he's slamming gash <laughs> what a, what a phrase wow uh, okay let us get into yeah. Also, I should just say, you know, because we've not, I think, had enough Family Guy references, his, um, oh, sexy girlfriend is also featured in Family Guy when Stewie and Brian do a radio show and he's one of the uh, kind of radio jingles they have. You know, there's another reference, you know, from, in Family Guy where, when uh, I think the grandpa, he's called Fred, says to Long Duck Gong, where is my automobile? <laughs> yeah. What is that? Because, like, I know that. Is that in Family Guy? Because I did recognize that as a thing. I was yeah, like, I know that. It's either in Family Guy or The Simpsons. 
Yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, do you have any nitpicks? Uh, no, actually. You know what? I didn't even think about nitpicks, but I don't think I do have any. Okay, uh, what about the fact that this is mine? Uh, the first day of school is apparently a Friday. That's a good point, actually. Um, it is. It is very strange, because sometimes when I was at school, the first day of school would end up being on a Thursday, a Friday. That means that your week, your your school week, is less than the following weekend. So yes, that is very strange. Good point. <laughs> yeah, less than the yeah. Well, what, I mean, what is the point in you know coming in to school for one day? Yeah, I mean, it could be like so. I I guess the one thing in which it would make sense is as like a um, what's it called? Induction day. No, but like, but, but it's not t- an induction day. To like start on the why fr- you just might as well start on Monday. You know, that's true. It's, yeah, it's utterly utterly ridiculous. The most ridiculous thing I've ever heard and. Apparently, you know, big oversight. Yeah, the movie for, for the movie to work, you know, it didn't need to be the first day of school, but apparently it was. Um, you mm. know, it could have just been like a Friday, you know, uh, at the start of the year, you know. Uh, but apparently, it, from what I yeah. gather, it was the first day of the school year. Uh, yeah. So she's she's a sophomore, right? Yeah. Now I just would like to clarify because I know you're an expert on Americans. Am I right in saying that the way high school works is you've got freshman, sophomore, junior, senior? Well, you're the expert, apparently. Well, I think that's how it works because I only know it from playing Sims. Okay. Well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Good. So, yeah, that's why I said you're the expert. Yeah, <laughs> that was the implication there. So yeah. yeah, you are absolutely correct there. And yeah, so um, the thing is, again, with American high schools, it's kind of weird because uh, you know there's another weird element here which we may discuss. I don't know if it's still the same in uh, in high school today in America, but the fact that you can have like a sophomore dating a senior. Uh, and that's not weird, but apparently you can share the same classes as you know people who are two years older than you. Uh, yeah, I thought that was weird that they were in the same class specifically, yeah. and it's kind of weird because it's almost like why why did John? Oh, look, I know everyone in the movie industry is a pedophile, and everyone was even more of a pedophile in the past, back before Me Too, um, and this was a long time before Me Too. But it seems completely unnecessary for there to be this age difference. Apart from, I guess, the general idea of like, oh, he wouldn't date you because you're a sophomore and yeah. your seniors are so cool. Yeah, but exactly. He can just be cool in general. He doesn't have to be older than her. Nah, nah, and then, nah. Because like, for for him to be the guy, he has to be a senior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that John Hughes can tell all the little boys in his trailer that that uh, it actually shows how cool they are. That John Hughes is much older than them. I just assume John Hughes was a pedophile. Well, I, just, I don't. I think, think that's a safe assumption. I don't think you should assume that. I'm I'm just gonna publicly on the record accuse it no no for the record that was a comedic comment from me okay. not to be i i apologize to the estate of john hughes well is he dead i you know i just assumed he i don't know yeah You're i right. assumed he'd been uh executed for his pedophile magic. yeah yeah 2009 okay yeah yeah he he, he is died dead. quite young actually so by rights he shouldn't be dead yeah exactly he should not be dead yeah, it said here he was stabbed in prison oh <laughs> that's not true yeah i know <laughs> yeah yeah, well, yeah, I, I'm surprised that actually he's as old as he is, even though, of course, he's dead, uh, because, you know, he he would have left high school in 1968, uh, but mm. yet all of his movies, which, of course, are set in the 80s because they came out in the yeah. 80s, are involving, you know, high school in the 1980s, which, you know, is it's almost 20 years since he left high school. Like, how is yeah. he, you know, why is he so interested? In- That's what I like about high school girls. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to compare this movie to Dazed and Confused. Uh, in in yeah. a bit, um, but yeah, just I, I was going to call it a worse dazed and confused. It's more structured than dazed and confused. Of course, it's it would you know be difficult not to be, but it is uh, it is worse. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So um, that was my nitpick, by the way. Yeah, first day of school, it's on a Friday, and yeah, seniors dating sophomores. That's apparently okay, but again, I don't know if that's a nitpick um, because maybe that's just normal. But to us, I think in the UK, it's it's a bit weird. Yeah, in yeah. the civilized world. Yeah, in the civilized world, exactly. So let's get into the plot. Uh, a girl's sweet sixteenth birthday is anything mm. but special. So yeah, again. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is from uh, maybe not so legal website, but yeah, yeah, that's that's a good line. The thing is, well, you know, like there is a term "sweet sixteen now. I have yes, because yeah. of my super sweet six sixteen, the reality TV show. Yes, and that is what is known uh, in March Madness, the NCAA basketball tournament. You know, the college basketball tournament. You get through mm. to the final sixteen, you're in the sweet sixteen. So there you go. Uh, so a girl's. Yes. So yeah, a sixteenth birthday is important in uh, in America. Um, so yeah, so that's why I think it had to be because it's not just any birthday; it's her sixteenth birthday. It's meant to be sweet, but it's not because it's well, it's anything but special because her family forgets about it and she suffers from every embarrassment possible. Uh, yeah, and this is where I put a more structured, dazed, and confused, but of course, yeah, a different 
you know, vibe, I guess, a different plot. Because, yeah, there is, you know, an element of just, oh, high school life, you know, parties and, you know, people getting drunk, people having, you know, sex. There is... Are there drugs? Are there drugs in this movie? Um, I can't remember. I don't, I don't think there are drugs. No, because that was a big element of Dazed and Confused. But maybe by, yeah, yeah. by the time the mid-80s came around, Reagan was cracking down on that shit. Yeah. So yeah. Mm, then, absolutely. Yeah, thank God. Uh, so yeah, people yeah, and effectively so I would hasten to add. Yeah. So instead, you know, teenagers were just uh, you know drinking a lot of alcohol, and you know that was that was fine. Good sort of pursuit. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So I think yeah. Overall, yeah, what this movie is about is if you think about it, like Molly Ringwald, who is playing Sam Baker, is a bit of a female incel. Uh, yes. A yeah. feminine cell. Yeah. Is that the term? Yeah. That is the term. Yeah. And, oh, she pines after this boy who, again, is way out of her league and, you know, a lot older than her. Well, actually, maybe not a lot older than her. Maybe he's only, like, you know, 14 months older, you know? Yeah, that's to be, yeah, to be fair. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, she, you know, yeah, she's a sophomore, but she's already 16. Well, the point is, like, this guy... But, but what if she was born in August and he was born in September? Now you've got a serious problem. Oh, yeah, no, now you, you've got a big issue. Please. I assume that years roll over at roughly the same months in the American system. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. She pines after this guy who, yeah, like, doesn't give a shit about her. But, of course, no, he actually does. Why? Because Sam Baker is the main character. Um, and this is, you know, her Cinderella story, if you will. Um, you know, she's the ugly sister. Uh, and I don't I don't think she is actually ugly, Molly Ringwald. But, you know, that's... Yes, that's, she's spiritually <laughs> ugly. Spirit, well, no, she's, she's spiritually beautiful, I think. You know, that's uh, yes. that's the contrast between her and her sister and her and Caroline, you know, because they're just dumb, blonde, you mm. know, more bimbos. Bimbos, yeah. But she, no, she's different. And to be honest, watching the movie, there's not really anything that unique about her. She wears a hat. Um, yeah. And that's pretty unique. But is there anything that's that special or different about her? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, and that's, that's the thing. It is kind of, you know, a Cinderella story, you know, this ordinary girl who's not ordinary though because she's different yeah. for some reason yeah she's just arbitrarily different yeah and she gets the guy even though there's no reason for the guy to actually go for her um uh, but she is the main character so yeah again yes. that, that's the thing the romance we talked about how underdeveloped it is in terms of you know they don't speak to each other and at least if they did speak to each other then okay maybe they have chemistry and maybe okay i could see this romance being you know like believable but Unless that happens, it just, you know, it just seems kind of, you know, unrealistic. And I guess if you are a girl who is 16 years older or around that age, and, you know, you want, you know, to go out with, you know, someone who, you know, is a couple of years older or just, you know, uh, out of your league, I guess would be, again, the, the, yes. the free term. Maybe this movie, you know, it gives you hope, you know. Um, I mean, of course, the one saving grace is the fact that romance is so underdeveloped means it doesn't really end up being... 100% what the movie's about because the movie does have other things going on as well yeah. because the romance is so underdeveloped but yeah, yeah. well that's why I was like oh yeah the day um, again I we've just seen Dazed and Confused relatively recently yes so that's why it sticks out in my mind because there are other high school movies where there's parties and you know a bunch of people get drunk and it's kind of like a day in the life but yeah this again is more structured and uh, mm. yeah I, I, you know what I would I guess maybe you have to have the wedding I'm not sure but I would prefer it if it all took place in one day like it starts off like it's her birthday. Yeah. It's her birthday. It starts off as the worst, you know, possible birthday. Everything's going wrong for her. But by the end of her birthday, and that's when she has, you know, the the candles with uh with with Jack Ryan, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Because to be honest, it's still a belated birthday, so it doesn't really count. It's the next. It's not. She should still be sad. It's not her birthday anymore. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Uh, maybe maybe her wish was that it would actually be her birthday, and when she says it's already come true, she's 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 fundamentally changed the world. Yeah, okay, and, and that's the thing. Like Jack Ryan, whose whose name you just want to you, you want to say his full name, right? Yeah, although yeah. I believe his name is actually Jake Ryan. Oh shit! <laughs> no, Jack Ryan's the fucking. Is he's the FBI agent? Or he's something. office gym, isn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> uh, Jake Ryan. Um, he, you know, he doesn't even know that it's her birthday, right? No, yeah, he doesn't. Until the last scene. And he doesn't know she's having a shit birthday. So, yeah, even that element, which is crucial to, you know, the plot. Yeah, like it's not, there's no substance to it emotionally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could, again, it's, this could have been so much better and so much less, you know, so much less racist and creepy. Um, yeah, like they could have cut those scenes. Like that's the kind of thing you were like saying, um, oh, you know, this movie's an hour and a half, blah, blah, blah. They could have made it a bit longer. To be fair, 
it's almost it's also almost like this movie has what feels kind of like filler in it yeah well that that's the protracted dazed and confused element isn't it you know, yeah exactly that's yeah. why i compare it to it yeah 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 because yeah, yeah i mean like look long long duck wong or whatever his name is he doesn't there's no way i'm going to get his name <laughs> no, right every single time no, and i'm going to sound racist by not saying his name correctly no it's it's long dong right long dong long dong with duck in the middle okay, long, okay. so long dong uh his scenes didn't take up too much no. time, so i think we can keep him in but yeah of course a big subplot is uh ted anthony michael hall uh yes. trying to get with sam and then caroline uh, which we will of course get into, but yeah, let, let's let's start with the development basically, Michael, because mm-hmm. John Hughes wrote Sixteen Candles in 1982, uh, but uh, the film went into turnaround, and Hughes attracted more interest in his screenplays after writing National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, yes, interesting fact, Michael. National Lampoon's Vacation. Uh, where are the Griswolds driving from? Um, Chicago. Oh yeah, well done. Good guess. That's a, that's a very good guess there. How did you... How I have you... actually seen the movie, but don't worry. I would not remember something like that. You don't need to be worried. Um, no, because you already mentioned when you were talking about Home Alone, you said, yeah, yeah, oh, that you was wrote the Home Alone joke. because it was in Chicago. Oh, I see. I see you were, you were joking me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after Hughes was fired from his next film, Mr. Mom, starring Michael Keaton, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, interesting. Where Where is Mr. Mom set? Uh, uh, I'm going to guess that's set in uh, Milwaukee. Uh, it's actually Detroit. <laughs> okay, good. So I was on the right track of picking a different Midwestern city. Yes. Uh, he decided to resume uh, production on 16 Candles as he felt it had more commercial appeal to his teenage target audience. Are you yes. telling me teenage audiences didn't enjoy Mr. Mom? Teenage audiences love racist humor yeah. and <laughs> yeah. date rape dialogue. They love it. They can't get enough yeah. of it. Yeah. And they hate Batman. I yeah. know it wasn't Batman yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, then he afterwards did another movie, which was uh, The Breakfast Club. Yes, uh, yes, which, as I've already mentioned, I saw The Breakfast Club and where in was, anticipation. Where was The breakfast, <laughs> breakfast Club set, Michael? You know, I don't actually know if they make it that explicit in the movie. <laughs> Having seen it, not like two or three days ago, um, I can't think well, if they give an obvious indication where it's set, but I'm going to guess it was actually Chicago again. Uh, Sherman, Illinois, which okay. is a suburb of Chicago, I imagine. Good. Because, yeah, we, we say his movies are set in Chicago. They're set in the rich suburbs of Chicago, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not set in the in the real Chicago. Yeah, yeah. It's the rich suburbs where everyone is white. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is not a non-white person in this movie. Yeah, uh, to be yeah. fair, I do find it cool because obviously, you know... Oh, sorry, Mom's of course. In... No, sorry, there is, of course, Long Duck... Don. <laughs> that's true yeah. well asian people you know they're i believe honorary yeah. aryans is the expression <laughs> okay well uh yeah so 16 candles he thought had more commercial appeal to his teenage target audience than the breakfast club which is why he did this movie first uh but of course the breakfast club became more iconic which we will probably review next year uh so yeah um let's get into the uh plot michael so uh in suburban chicago wait what uh, high school sophomore Samantha Sam Baker is hopeful her 16th birthday is the beginning uh, beginning of a great new year. Um, yeah, again, you got the trademark, you know, uh, of every John Hughes movie, Chicago. They're relatively wealthy, from what we can tell. Uh, yes. They're white, of course. Uh, and yeah, it's about, you know... Yeah. You, he also, uh, he likes his big families, if uh, Home Alone and uh, this movie or any movie, you know, they're enough to go by. Yeah, um, well, Ferris Bueller's Day Off doesn't have a big family. Okay, yeah. I didn't. Okay, yeah. What? I didn't even. I didn't know that was a John Hughes film. You didn't I've know that, that was a John. Fucking hell. Yeah. Well, you know, I know. Uh, let me. Let me see if I. Maybe I've seen thousands. Do, do you know of John why Hughes you can tell it's a John Hughes movie, Michael? Uh, because uh, it's set in Chicago. There we go. You, you, you're catching on now. So yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so sixty. Hmm, let me just look at these movies. Sixteen Candles, eighty four. Breakfast Club, eighty five. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, eighty six. Okay, where's Where's Weird Science set? Because I've seen that movie. I, I'm I'm not sure, but it's probably Chicago. I'm gonna I'm gonna place a bet on Chicago. Okay, yeah. You know what the interesting thing about um uh, Weird Science is that I guess you probably know it's about two nerds who decide to create the perfect movie. So there is kind of rapey stuff going on there. Oh. But the other good thing about it. Wait, 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 wait. The perfect movie. Oh, sorry, the perfect woman. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. But the one thing I was going to say is, of course, it's very relevant to that one um, pornographic film that I sent you the intro to one time, where this nerd, uh, there's a nerd and a jock, and they're oh, trying yeah. to create the perfect perfect woman, and then the perfect <laughs> woman comes out, and the nerd's like smiling, and the jock's like, "Mom." <laughs> that, that's great. That's a great twist. Yeah. You, obviously, that was one. Which of honestly, my... like, I was so disappointed when I was watching Weird Science, and I was like, "Wait a minute." Oh, they just took. They didn't. Place. They didn't make his mom. Yeah, they just. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. I see. Well, yeah. I was upset that weird. Um, you know, what's it called? Weird science didn't turn into a porno. Oh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, okay. he, did, he did a few movies, didn't he? Yeah, that was a, that was a classic Popus Gay episode. That uh, yeah. maybe we should do that again. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I've not actually confirmed where it was set, but it wasn't. Oh, uh, Sherma. Wait. 
Oh, here's a here's an interesting thing. It's also they're also from Shermer High School. This is some kind of John Hughes cinematic universe here. Says nerdy social outcast students Gary Wallace and Wyatt Donnelly of Shermer High School. Brackets the same fictional high school used in the Breakfast Club. Oh, well, mm. there we go. That's interesting. A- anyway, um, yeah, so <laughs> let's talk about 16 Candles again, the John Hughes movie we are reviewing. So, yeah, obviously her sister, Ginny, uh, is getting married. You know, she's older, beautiful, and self-absorbed. Uh, and, yeah, I-, I-, I think it's a decent premise. If you think about it, it is the complete opposites of Ferris Bueller, where everyone hates his sister, um, of course. Uh, Ferris Bueller, you know, yes. gets, you know, everyone likes Ferris Bueller. Uh, exactly. Everyone hates his sister. What what's his sister called? Like Jenny? Uh yeah. Yeah, maybe. That's Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny. Jenny. Uh okay, right. So but yeah, Ginny, on the other hand, she, you know, is the is the sibling to Molly Ringwald, and yeah, uh, Ginny is, is is liked, even though she appears to be headed for quite a shit life. Uh Mar- yeah, yeah, well she's marrying like a, a mafioso. You mean some fucking wop? <laughs> yeah. What do they what do they what is that word they keep using to describe him? It's like a, a bunk hod. Goof, no, they, um, goof knob. I don't know. <laughs> it's some kind of weird I was like, is that like a racial is this is this movie so racist it's got <laughs> racial slurs I've never even heard of? Yeah, I've heard of a this lot is of incredible. racial slurs. Uh yeah. yeah, but now that's I respect it if it is a slur for Italians. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So yeah, the opposites of very it's just interesting that it's yeah, the premise is kind of the opposites of Paris Bueller. Although throughout the movie like the contrast between her and her sister never really gets brought up a lot. It's just at the start of the movie, and then her mm. parents say sorry to her. So yeah, yeah, it's you know, I guess it lessens the comedy, it makes it more wholesome, which again is why because the, the movie does try and go down a more wholesome path, which is why a lot of the, again, the uh, <clears throat> date rape dialogue and you know racism just yeah. it, it's wholesome date rape doesn't really fit in with some of the, <laughs> some of the other scenes in the movie. This was really weird. You know, at the start of the movie when she's filling out that questionnaire. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a funny questionnaire they've got there. Well, at school, Sam fills out a friend's sex quiz where she reveals her crush on senior classmate Jake Ryan. Like, I honestly thought they were in a sex ed class. I thought that too, but at- then I realised, like, when they, I was, like, ca- catching on that there was something else going on. Yeah, well, at first, before looking on Wiki, I thought the school was asking them these questions. And yes. then you got to the last question, who do you want to do it with? Because uh, I thought they were just being... I ca- wanted to see the teacher winking. <laughs> I thought they were just being maybe casual, like, oh, because, you know, they don't, you know, oh, who who would you do it with? Because, you know, they wanted to get, like, honest answers, you know, they wanted to speak down to them, and they wanted to just, yeah. you know, get a, get a feel. Who, who'd you bump uglies with, kids? Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> who, um, you, you know, just to get a rough idea of, like, who in the school, well, not yeah. who in the school, what the numbers were in the school, and maybe, oh, it's part of this wider survey, except, well, whatever. No, then then at the end, who would you do? I was like, what the fuck is this? What, what like, that, that... Yeah, and then I looked on Wikipedia. I was like, okay, this makes sense. Okay, I'm not going crazy here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think there yeah. was one thing where she said, like, I was filling in your questionnaire. I think she said that to oh. her friend, uh, and at that moment, I was like, okay, so, but I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, you know, I don't think you're a stupid idiot for not having picked up that she said that. Yeah, yeah, it was a just, bit of a buried line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, uh, meanwhile, Jake, having noticed how Sam looks at him and not being weirded out, I guess, yeah, like if a guy looks at a girl like that, the girl is weirded out, but. Mm. If a girl looks at a guy like that, then oh, okay, that's interesting, you know. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. as uh, Anthony Michael Hall says, you know, guys, you know, they're they're uh, they're in heat all the time. I believe is the phrase used. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, and that's their excuse. <laughs> yes, that's yes, that is the excuse. So uh, of course, you know, he asks his friend Rock about <laughs> what a name, Rock, man. I'm sorry, I just that is pretty cool, Rock. <laughs> Rock dismisses her as immature. Well, he actually says she's a child. Uh, yes. Yeah, which again is... I, I wouldn't put that in my movie if I wanted to kind of not make people think, wait, one could be 18 and one could be 16 yeah. and she's a day over 15 and, you know... Uh, again, I, I wouldn't put that in my movie. Or oh, that line. But Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jake says he is frustrated by his girlfriend Caroline's partying ways. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, and then... <laughs> I know, awful. What a, what a nerd. Yeah. Like J- Jake's not like other guys, you know. He doesn't want a hot girlfriend who who always parties, you know. He he wants someone who is, you know, boring like Molly Ringwald. Um, yes. <laughs> so she's too cool and hot. Yeah, I know. So and that the thing is, <laughs> okay, this is another weird transition because we see like the first, you know, do you remember the first shot we get of Caroline? Um. Oh, like her boobs. Yeah. 
Like, it, that's the first shot we get of her. In uh, the shower. Yeah, I know. And, like, that's what I mean like, about the vibe of the movie being weird. Because, you know, you know, that kind of scene isn't, like, you know, oh, it's, you know, out of date or, you know, wrong. Like, maybe the racist jokes are. But, you know, it does seem like a wholesome movie at parts. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what I picked up from, like, a few of, like, it's kind of interesting that he, like, managed to avoid, like, with Home Alone, I respect his restraint from not including, like, some kind of weird, you know, thing in that. Like, just his mum's, like, randomly naked at some point or something. Because, uh, you know, like, that was a good, um, that was a good family movie, and I'm glad yeah. he didn't ruin it. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing. It has the appeal of, the, like, a wholesome, you know, mm. family movie aimed at, you know, like, teenagers, perhaps, or not, not just teenagers, you know, like, uh you know 12 year olds you know 13 year olds yes. like because you know that could that could work because you know some of the storylines in this movie though just don't cross over into that demographic you would assume anyway um yeah, yeah because yeah like how oh, this kid you know she doesn't get enough attention you know or she's having an awful birthday yeah, you know her sister is getting married she's getting all the attention and yeah then out of nowhere we just get oh here's a shot of you know boobs and oh then here's his long duck dong <laughs> and here's some uh, you know nice uh, nice slurs a couple of faggots a couple of retardeds you know just thrown in there again it's a very 80s movie uh that's 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 the sense i got it's like the most 80s movie possible all of this stuff combined together it just can only have existed in this period of time you know that all this stuff would work together in a movie and it'd be heralded as a classic you know you know what i mean yeah 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 i, I agree with you like this it's like they didn't care about tonal consistency or something back then where they didn't really care about but i don't know movies having some kind of united message yeah but in the 80s what i think is that was tonally consistent like it wasn't weird yeah that was it yeah yeah it wasn't weird to go from one to the other nowadays from our perspective it is but it wasn't back in the day which again is what makes the movie kind of entertaining and interesting so anyway uh, at home sam's day gets worse when she uh, discovers she must sleep on the sofa because her grandparents and a foreign exchange student named Long Duck Dong, are all staying at the house for the wedding. Oh, wow. Uh, this, this movie gets good right here with the yes. intro introduction of Long Duck Dong. Remember his first line? I know they, they don't... Am I right in saying they accompany him quite immediately with the sound of a, an Asian symbol, a gong? Yeah, what, yeah, yes. yeah, but before that... He, okay, he, I, I got, yeah. He, what, when did you last watch this movie? Five hours ago. <laughs> I just can't remember his exact line. I well, remember it when you say it. You know, it's the horny Asian stereotype. Because, you know, he, he puts his head down and sees her and goes, oh, what's happening, hot stuff? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah, good old... Hot stuff. <laughs> yeah. Long duck dong. Uh, and I love how, you know, it's such a great name, man. Again, it's a racist name, but it's such a great name. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't help but love it. And, yeah, I, I love how he's referred to as a Chinaman just casually a few times you know yeah yeah which is, is to be fair it's always been my favorite racial slur just because it's just saying where someone's from yeah yeah but, oh my god when the grandparents they're driving out of the driveway for, uh, for the wedding and i think one of the grandparents says to you know uh the other who has you know who has long duck dongazi uh, exchange student oh look fred over there there's your chinaman and it's just it's yeah. just such a like a casually racist what's he doing off his leash <laughs> But like I, I love I love that line so much because of course the the movie it's intended to show how racist these grandparents are like oh look there's you know there yeah. is a part of it as well but just like that can be said in a movie and it can just be okay mm. uh, but it's just it's just very entertaining yeah, not enough people cared about it well so in the 1984 review in the New York Times uh, there was a criticism of Long Duck Dong. For being unfunny, I disagree. <laughs> and, yes. and a potentially offensive stereotype. Good. I what? like the use of the word potentially there. <laughs> Only potentially. Only pot- I say uh, potentially is doing some heavy lifting there. Yeah. Well, it didn't offend me, so there you go. That's true, yeah. yeah. Uh, a potentially offensive stereotype of Asian people. Yeah. And that's the thing. At the time in the 1980s, this was criticized for, for being racist. Like, again, what is more racist, Long Duck Dong or uh, the Mickey Rooney portrayal of a Japanese person in Breakfast at Tiffany's? Uh, I feel like, I will say, like, Mickey Rooney is more offensive because at least this is an Asian guy. Good point. Portraying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you make a good point before, actually, Michael. Is it offensive? Because Long Duck Dong, the reason why I love him is because he's an alpha. Like, yes. Yeah, okay, you know, he may have a stupid name and he may be, like, horny and that's an Asian stereotype. You know, and a gong may fly every time. 
Yes. I can tell you're laughing out of respect for him. Do you know how wild that is? Like, how crazy that is? Like, John Hughes thinks, oh Dong. yeah, every time this Asian guy is mentioned in the movie, we're going to go, gong. <laughs> I respect it so much, but again, I, I love that that exists, man. I love it. So, uh, Alison McAdam of NPR wrote, to some viewers, he represents one of the most offensive Asian stereotypes Hollywood ever gave America. Asian Americans have complained that they were taunted with quotes of his stilted English lines. Oh dear, this I, is like the whole Apu, thank you, come again thing. Oh, hello, hot stuff. I don't know, sorry, what's happening, hot stuff? My apologies. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. And every time someone speaks, gong, who's Asian. They should, uh, they should reclaim it. It should be like their version of the N-word. They should be like, hello, <laughs> hot stuff. Oh, sorry, what's, what's happening, hot stuff? Oh, God. John Hughes has a lot to answer for, man. Because like, it's such an obviously like racist portray- like he's only in there to add comedy because oh look it's the Asian guy being weird like he's called the weird Chinese guy by the family uh, and yeah the, the name and everything is- yeah but is his name the thing is his name isn't even like a Chinese name no. I would swear. <laughs> like I'm sure his name must be Southeast Asian like well, like that name well I, I don't think any Asian has the first name Long Long Duck Dong no I mean I, I, I Dong is actually a, you know an Asian surname um, but Okay, he's played by a Japanese American. Yes, I was I, I was about to get onto this. Yes, which is what the Japanese American was very keen to mock the Chinese guy, uh, or the Chinese. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, good. We can always rely on East Asians being racist against each other. Yes, yes, yeah. But yeah, Long is def. The reason why his first name is Long because he, it's because his surname is Dong. Yeah, Long Dong, which is yeah. actually really funny. Yeah, it's it's hilarious. <laughs> like I can't believe believe he got away with this. But again, it was the 1980s. Again, it's a very 80s movie. You couldn't get away with something like this today. So uh, Gede Watanabe, who played Long Duck Dong, defended the character of Dong as being distinct from uh, submissive, smart stereotypes of Asians at the time, which is true. But also there are other stereotypes. Again, he's just a caricature. And yeah, that's meant to be the joke. So obviously it's going to be racist. Uh, Hughes argued that he was parodying foreign exchange students and their American host families in general, rather than Asians specifically. I would respect it more if it was just like, I, I, I thought it would be funny to that be racist. It's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. Like, what about the gong then, John Hughes? What about <laughs> yeah, the gong? Well, that's what, if he was German, there would have been a dong. <laughs> Why was he... Hello there, it's me, Gunther. Dong. Why was he called Long Dong, John Hughes, if it wasn't meant to be parodying Asians or making fun of Asians? Why was he called Long Dong? Come on. I guess you could argue, oh yeah, like they, you know, host families treat this you know uh, this foreign exchange student like just this weird outcast who's like an alien uh which of course happens in this movie and that's what he's parodying but to be fair long duck dong is kind of weird you know he is <laughs> it makes sense that he's yeah, treated they validate his uh, the racism yeah exactly which again is you that's a good term for it michael because that is the central problem to for this character like yeah the racism is valid validated people or you know high school kids who like being racist see this portrayal of long duck dong and they're like oh yeah i can be racist now you know in in mm. in real life hence yeah I, I was not surprised when i read asian americans have complained that they were taunted with quotes of his english lines uh so yeah uh long duck dong one of my favorite characters in movie history because he exists uh like, yeah yeah, yeah. Iron- he's I- kind of a pioneer yeah ironically he is one of my favorite characters but kind of unironically as well because the fact that this could be put in a movie and Again, it's heralded as a classic, and it's not even the most controversial thing from the uh, from the movie, is it? Mm. No, it's not. No, that's the great thing. Yeah, they said. I also like how race and rape—they're one letter apart—and this movie hit both of them. <laughs> Good point. So let's talk about Ted now, uh, played by Anthony Michael Hall, the uh, freshman. He uh, yes. <laughs> well, that was a weird yes. Yes, let's talk about him, Luke. So uh, Sam fends off flirtations from a geeky freshman Ted, of course, on the bus. Uh, and yeah, I just put the most respectful and charming 1980s male character in a high school movie. Uh, yes. This guy, yeah. Uh, in an effort to salvage his reputation, Ted bets his friends a dozen floppy disks that he will get physical with Sam. As proof, his friends demand Sam's underwear. And yeah, it's just normal 1980s stuff, guys. You know, and I, I guess the, yeah. the movie portrays like geeks as incels. I, I mean, I'm thinking forward and, you know, we'll get into it later at the end of the episode. But I'm thinking forward to the movie we're doing next next week um okay or next time but yeah i think like there was this thing have you ever seen the uh i think it's a channel called pop culture detective they did a, a video essay as the pretentious people are calling it about i think the phrase they used was adorkable misogyny and it was basically the the idea that especially in the 80s um 
nerd characters were presented as really predatory but like it's kind of the idea that because it's because they're weak and pathetic yeah there's the idea that it's harmless and i think this is a good example of that or because yeah. it's like a dweeb okay yeah because that's yeah you're right because this movie doesn't actually condemn the character of ted like they don't make mm. him out to be a, a bad guy even though like he does some pretty you know bad things um yes which we may get to some of that later on but anyway ted apologizes to sam who opens up about her crush on jake and so yeah ted tells her that jake asked about her and sam is shocked and asks you know what ted thinks she should do and despite his genuine interest in sam ted encourages her to talk to jake and she agrees but that's after like he tries to jump in her twice yeah like in a way also i feel like it's kind of like um he's he's rewarded for not raping her by being able to rape someone else because it's kind of like (laughs) he doesn't rape her and that's good um but then the next thing that happens is that the guy who he's kind of giving her up for is like hey you know you can you can have sex with my girlfriend she's passed out okay that doesn't happen yet no yeah yeah but i'm just saying like so in the long term it's like like the message here is kind of hey you know don't steal another guy's girl because if you um or you know don't 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 take a girl who's pining for another guy help help a bro out yeah maybe he'll help you out wink, yeah wink. <laughs> okay right yeah we'll get, we'll get to that later so uh before she leaves um okay ted gets her underwear to win his bet and his friends charge the other freshman boys a dollar to see it and Good. i was like oh yeah that's that's that famous scene like there's so many references that have been uh, used in pop culture i think the family yaya simpsons parodied that scene Yes, yeah. I do kind of remember oh, it's it. Definitely Family Guy, right? It wouldn't be yeah. Simpsons. <laughs> Simpsons. Simpsons is a is a good family show. It's a wholesome show, yeah. Yes. Now, the thing is, like, I don't know why she agrees to do it because and and later, like, her friend phones. Uh, I I can't remember her friend's name. It's irrelevant. Her friend phone. Yeah. Uh, friend phone. <laughs> Simon's like, hey, just to let you know, uh, my my brother said he paid one dollar to, uh, to see your underwear, and she like screams, and it's like, yeah. Well, what the fuck did you expect to happen? Yeah, you could say she was asking for it. You could say that. <laughs> you could say that. And that is an interesting philosophy, which we'll explore later. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With you, like, it's kind of like, it's almost weird. Like, this movie has a kind of, uh, it's almost like an, an attitude of, like, rape sure is inconvenient. Because <laughs> it's like, she's not like, no one's, like, really bothered by it in this movie. It just, like, happens or, like, you know, sex well, crimes and stuff like well, that. Uh, it's like, oh, you know. Well, no, I, I mean, this giving him her underwear. That's, it is consensual. That's, no, yeah, yeah it's, right. not, it's not sex crime. What, oh, yeah, yeah. what I'm saying is it's crazy that she's like, oh, oh well, no, how could this happen? It's like, what well, again, you gave like a 14 year old kid, like you're on, like, what do you, you know? Yeah. How could this not happen? He, he said specifically it's to win a bet. So he was going to show his friends your underwear. I, I, yeah, no, whatever. Maybe she was screaming with excitement and we just messed, maybe, oh. maybe she's just a really bad actress and that's what John Hughes okay. intended. Right. Fine. So uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about uh, Ted now, uh, played mm. by anthony michael hall so he saw a number of actors uh, including who michael um john cusack uh, jim uh, carrey jim carrey jim yeah. carrey uh, wow. i should have given you another clue the same initials as john cusack damn it. yeah it is interesting yeah yeah every single kid who came in to read for the part did the whole stereotyped high school nerd thing thick glasses ballpoint pens in the pocket i can white- imagine jim carrey doing that <laughs> yeah white socks but when michael came in he played it straight like a real human being i knew right at that moment that i found my geek um, that's what wow. John Hughes said, and yeah, I think it's a good portrayal because you know it's he feel he does feel more human, you know he does feel like less stereotypical. He you know it's a less less of a comedic caricature, but overall I I I do think again this is what I was saying before about how this movie tries to be a bit wholesome, like and the fact that this character is you know not a stereotype. Okay, it's trying to be, you know, it's trying to yeah. it's trying to be you know show him as a human being yeah and then it, you just contrast that to, to the uh, to the other scenes and the contrast is very noticeable you get what I'm yes saying? yeah no yeah 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 i do get you like it's almost like the idea of wanting to show him in a as, as a real person it almost makes some of the bad stuff worse and uh, you know the movie is almost better if it's kind of cartoony and nonsense yeah yeah exactly uh so uh well i'm, I'm not sure if it makes it worse it just heightens the contrast makes yeah the worst things just stand out more anyway because yeah because again the tone is what you think you're watching more movie and then the tone shifts and you're like oh okay and it stands out more anyway so right this is <laughs> okay uh well we're getting we're gonna get into jake now michael mm. so so sam pri- uh, tries to approach jake this was at the dance but loses her nerve and runs off jake and caroline leave leaving sam thinking jake does not like her and vice versa 
Uh, at Jake's house, Caroline has her friends. Uh, sorry, Caroline and her friends have started a wild party. Jake goes to the, his bedroom and tries to call Sam, but her grandparents answer the phone and they tell him that Sam isn't interested. Again, this is typical rom-com stuff like misunderstanding. Yeah. You know, like oh, if they like, just uh, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, if they just, yeah, they kill each other at the end instead of yeah. wishing. <laughs> Uh, instead of Jake wishing her a happy birthday, it's like a it's like a murder suicide cult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, they, so the cake is poison then. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, this is where I put. Why is Jake into Sam? You know, do, does he like hats? Yeah. You know, does he does? That's the thing I was thinking. Like, if they just had one conversation, like right at the start of the movie, where when Sam is staring at Jake, you know, like the femme cell she is. Yes. What if instead of that scene they like were put together in class for some reason the teacher made them sit together and they yeah. were working on something and they got on well they had chemistry would that be yeah. better? Uh, yeah. Or I think they could just go down the route of just uh, just just being honest about the fact that he's a very predatory guy and uh, just fully lean into that angle for every single male character and then it's just like just like yeah she just seems young and you know the fact she's so into me means I could probably manipulate her into doing whatever I want. Yeah. Like, well you know that does make sense that does explain it. <laughs> but of course uh, the fact that this is a Cinderella. Uh, you know, fantasy essentially. Uh, yeah. It means that you know th- he has to be charming to her at least. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he can't be mani- manipulative. By the way, Michael, uh, for Jake, you know, uh, of course, uh, Shofing got the part. I hope I pronounced that right. But who who else was up for it? Um, uh, Johnny Depp. No, no. Oh, that... Is it is it a guy who's generally thought of as attractive? Yes, oh, I think okay. honestly. Brad Pitt. No, I have heard this guy. He played a character in the early 2000s. Uh, and I have seen this guy referred to as like one of the most attractive male Mel Gibson. characters ever. Well, Charlie Sheen. No. Oh, who's who's hot? Again, it's a movie you really like. Uh, Orlando Bloom. What? Or Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, you got it. Viggo Mortensen. Viggo Mortensen. Okay, yeah. Uh, Orlando yeah, Bloom. Because Orlando Bloom's British and way younger. Yeah. And do you really like Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, he was. No, he's also in Lord of the Rings because he's Legolas. Oh Legolas. fuck! Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. How could you forget about Legolas? You're right. Yeah, Legolas. What a cool character. Yeah, he he surfs. <laughs> he's, he surfs down on some stairs. Yeah. On a skateboard. I mean, on a shield. Yeah. So Viggo Mortensen, and I, and I think he would have been better because honestly, like I, I don't know actually because I think yeah, the character of Jake is pretty again underdeveloped, underwritten, and he's kind of very creepy because of the dialogue, and it would be hard to save this character honestly. So maybe yeah. Viggo Mortensen. Uh, sorry. Mortensen would have done a better job, but I doubt it. Uh, yeah, yeah. He could have had them like bond over liking Lord of the Rings. That would have been a like it would make more sense if that if both of them had more of a personality. Like they literally all you yes. have to do is like make it, for example, like they're both nerds, and maybe this guy's attractive, so he kind of like well, so he he's doesn't a... automatically gravitate towards the nerd clique. But he he's a secret nerd. Yeah, he's a secret nerd. He's a closet nerd, and she's like a nerd as well. And she's like, how how could a nah, guy that? Nah, it's nah. like a Avril Lavigne skater boy. She has to be a normal girl though. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, but maybe maybe she's a bit. Maybe she's normal, but she's kind of like a nerdy, but in a kind of um, normal way. So it's kind of like you know when a girl's like, Tiki, I'm a nerd. I like Star Wars, like that kind of thing. Oh yeah. Like maybe she's just like you know, like she's like, I saw Star Wars the other day, and the guy's like, Wow, she's yeah. she's so. And I guess yeah, in the 1980s, that would be enough. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no. Star Wars. Wow. Yeah, but I guess you just need like again the, the hypothetical scene that I imagine. Uh, you know, in in that classroom, you know, they they're talking to each other. They have chemistry. That maybe I don't know. Star Wars is you know uh, a bit like basic. I, I don't know. They just have you know. It's clear she's different to, to the other girls, and it's clear that this Jake. Oh, he's got something about him. You know, he's not like a stereotypical like jock. You know, and it's like oh mm-hmm. okay. You know, she she wants him, and he's like hey, I I hate my bitch girlfriend caroline and i want to rape Good, her yeah yeah so, <laughs> yes. like, so but, no, he's like no he doesn't want to rape her he wants her to be raped okay he's he's not he just can't task. be asked raping so he's like, like you i'm know trying to you... find a, a geek guy to rape my girlfriend you only hate your fucking bitch girlfriend. like you don't even want to rape you want someone else to do it that's how much you yeah. despise her yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, oh yeah, and, and and she's like, wow, this guy, he's really speaks to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. He, he, I know what you mean. Yeah, he wouldn't actually uh, allude yeah. to that, uh, but he, yeah, he would be like, oh, I want to move on. And okay, this girl is different, you know. Uh, but again, there's no reason why Jake would ever like this girl. She, she, why is she different? There is no reason that she is different that we we even see. You know, never mind Jake. We don't even see why she is like special. Um, I guess, you know, she gives yeah. a, uh, a freshman her underwear. That's the one thing about her which I'm like, oh, okay, prob- a normal girl probably wouldn't do that. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one unique feature is that she gave a freshman her underwear. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And she wears a hat. There we go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took yeah. back in the day. Yeah, that's that's all it took. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's get on to... Well, by the way, Molly Ringwald uh, wanted Viggo Mortensen to get the role. Uh, so maybe the chemistry would have been better, but again, they have like two scenes together in the movie. So I don't even know what Viggo Mortensen was doing back then. Well, he was, he was probably acting. Uh, yeah, pr- probably. That would yeah. make sense. So let's talk about Jake and, well, we've we, we've kind of alluded to it throughout the whole review and we're going to get onto it now. Uh, and we specifically kind <laughs> of referenced it. Yeah, uh, just a couple of minutes ago. So after the party, Jake is furious at the damage left behind. He finds Ted trapped under a coffee table. After having knocked over the beer can pyramid, Ted tells Jake uh, Sam is interested in him, and Jake confesses that he has lost interest in Caroline. And how do we know that? Uh, because Jake says he could violate her ten different ways right now because she's passed out cold. And yes, that is the guy that our girl wants to get with. Yeah, it's yeah. very, it's very normal. Yeah, like I, I do wonder if it was just the attitude of the time. Like the eighties were crazy, perhaps, and. Therefore, this line wasn't that weird, but it seems so weird. Like, yeah. he could have just said, well, you know, I could go up there and have sex with her right now. Yeah, but- <laughs> I could fucking gang-, gang rape her if there was more than one of me. Yeah, that's, he said violate. <laughs> like, why did he say violate? This is like, no one no one knew how to talk about sex back then. It's like, yeah, I, I mean, if I was fucking Ted, like, I, I mean, I don't know this character Ted again whether he would be weirded out maybe everyone was that weird in the 80s but I'd just be like what do you mean violate her what the fuck are you talking about like are you you know I don't I wouldn't be that confrontational because I'm not an alpha but I would say oh yeah Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Just, oh, uh, so, you, okay. Sorry, what did you just say just then? You want to yeah. violate her when she's passed yeah. out? What are you? I, I, I would try to subtly redirect his language in a different direction. About, oh, really? You could make carnal love to her right now. <laughs> yeah. You could make sweet, tender love to her right now. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that what you're telling me? <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? Oh, uh, yeah. Also, also like, like, okay, Jake, think about what he does, right, with, with uh, Sam's underwear. Because, of course, Ted has her underwear, right? And hmm. part of the deal of Ted driving Caroline home, which he, you know, Ted doesn't really want to do, but he said, oh, you can you can drive her home uh, if you give me her underwear. Do, yes. Do you remember that? Like, it's like, he really wants that, you know. It's very transactional. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, why, why do you want that, you know, so much, you know? Um, but you know, that's I guess that's the less weird part of the conversation, honestly. Uh, yeah. And but but then, it's always it's always good when the less weird, least weird part of a conversation is yeah bargaining for a girl's underwear yes. who you've never spoken to. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, and then right, what he does next, honestly, is I don't think it gets enough attention from what I know about this movie and uh, from reading about it on Wikipedia, because uh, of course you know saying oh yeah I could rape my girlfriend if I wanted to but I can't be asked that of course gets you know a lot of attention but think about what he does next right so he puts his girlfriend into this rolls royce again his dad's role yeah his dad's rolls royce who you know again like he's such a dickhead like why smash up your dad's rolls royce just casually whatever like a rich he's he's a rich you know suburban yeah. dick yeah, I, yeah. I, I genuinely love the fact like you would not have to change anything about his character to make him the absolute villain of i know a movie like this i know i know i know I, again but like think about what he does right his dad okay sorry his dad's rolls royce is going to be driven by a 14 year old who can't drive who yeah. says who is drunk again yes who is drunk who said multiple times i can't drive i don't want to drive i've never driven before i don't have a license i don't know what what the fuck i'm doing he's like i don't care he puts his girlfriend in this car that's a good point yeah like risking her life fucking yeah. what if this kid who was drunk crashes the car which you know he almost does uh you know he crashes it into like a post box or whatever um, and yeah, then you and she's not wearing a seatbelt, I think, either. Which again, who cares? It's, yeah. it's the well, 19- that would make it more difficult for her to blow him. Oh, good point. Yeah, it's the 1980s. You know, who cares about seatbelts? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like that's that's wild, man. That like, he does that. And again, nobody really talks about that. But I was thinking about it, watching it. It's like, yeah, he he endangers her life like very casually. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and the you know the kid's life as well, of course. The 14 year old who's never driven before, like he just peer pressures him into doing it. Yeah, well, you know, like, there's, like, that thing people say about how, like, Ferris Bueller's actually secretly a psychopath. Um, yes. Like, seeing this movie, that makes this way more credible, because I'm like, yeah, I, I can believe that John Hughes would just write a, a complete psychopath and not really, you know, well, basically have them be... I know this guy isn't exactly the hero of the story, because he's a side character, but, you yeah. know... 
yeah i'll give you a spoiler uh, i was having seen the breakfast club i didn't like it that much precisely because i also thought the characters were very unlikable oh okay well, in fact there's another there's another character who's quite aggressively misogynistic and it's presented as like um yeah. him being tortured in some kind of interesting way she's like yeah. oh, i wonder why he's like that yeah yeah i wonder why he just called me a cunt <laughs> <laughs> so that again that it's very interesting that again this is i guess you know the white male heteronormative perspective that you can just be like this and it can be acceptable in society the fact that these movies were popular shows how much things have progressed in the last 40 years mm. honestly that's 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 my takeaway and yeah like this yeah. makes me feel less guilty about enjoying american pie because i'm like <laughs> well you know they sure they weren't great but you know they weren't they didn't they didn't, they, they, they didn't uh, like when they said they were going to film a woman and when they were having sex with her at least they didn't say they were going to film her while they were violating her at least yeah. they made sure to coax that the coach their language what, coach their language what um that guy i can't remember his name the main character jim is it did in the movie was yeah. still pretty bad uh but yeah that's that's the thing you know back in the day i guess sex comedies which this is kind of like mm. y- you know they had tropes and they had i, I guess the problem uh, the word would be problematic um, yes. you know scenes and storylines which were just viewed as normal and John Hughes maybe is re- partly responsible for that and yeah again this is a primate you know this is a great example of it uh, that, yeah. yeah something that was just viewed as normal oh you know there's a 16 candles a coming, coming of age drama which was you know popular at the time and you look back on it and you're like oh wow yeah again it shows how much things have co- come in the past four years that this would be unacceptable um, and yeah well Let's let's talk more about date rape. So this is from Wikipedia. In an article published in Salon, Amy Benford considers whether the, whether the film condones date rape, even though no sexual activity is established consensual or, consensual or otherwise. Well, it's like they think they might have done it. Yes, but also, which you mentioned before, when um, Caroline falls onto Ted's lap, uh, t- Ted looks down and yes. Then he's like, oh, okay. And then he turns to the camera, breaks the fourth wall, which is, again, something we saw a lot more in Ferris Bueller. He says, oh, this, you know, he says to the camera, this got interesting or something. Yeah, so, he said, this little kitten's got claws. He didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, again, the implication is, oh, she's giving him a blowjob, even though, again, you know, there, there is no, we, we don't see it, you know, but that is the implication. And again, what, yeah. when they wake up in the parking lot, uh, the implication is oh yeah they had yeah. sex so yeah we yeah, don't i guess like the only the only thing i'll say there is the implication is like it, it's kind of weird because he's like he says he doesn't remember whether or not they had sex so yeah. like who knows maybe maybe he can be like well i was so drunk too that i didn't even know i was raping her yeah oh maybe maybe uh but anyway so um obviously jake when you know they're at his house says to ted you know uh referring to caroline you know you can drive her home uh she's so blitzed she won't know the difference Yes, good line. So that is obviously, of course, insinuating, yeah, you should have sex with my girlfriend and, you know, she won't care. And of course, if she doesn't know who is having sex with her, you, you would think that would that would not be uh, consensual, right? Th- this is meant to be the guy who we want, you know, the main girl to uh, to get with. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, like, maybe the reason why is because we're like, well, gosh, you know, he really needs... See, I was going to say, you know what, I was about to say, oh, he needs to get with a woman who, like, actually likes him just so that he doesn't have to rape her. But the thing is, even, uh, even like, that woman really, really liked him, and he, that actually annoyed him. <laughs> like, this literal, like, thing was, like, basically, he could violate her. So clearly, he's such a rapist that he doesn't even want to be in a position where it would be easy for him to have the sex. Yeah. If a woman's like, I enthusiastically consent, he'd be like, boring. <laughs> so, uh, Benford also writes, uh, the scene... Uh, so in the parking lot only works because people were stupid enough about date rape at the time so again maybe it's just the 1980s they were just like oh you know oh she, this woman had sex with a guy and she doesn't remember you know if she did it or who she was doing it with oh that's just life even though today of course that would be looked on rather differently so yeah yeah uh, again today that would be rape yes exactly back yes. then it wasn't well yeah back then like, back then it was fine yeah l- literally apparently it was because this is a popular movie which got released and yeah everyone loved it um even in a Randy team comedy, this is Ben Burke, continues, you would never see two sympathetic male characters conspiring to take advantage of a drunk chick these days. Yes, again, you would not. Things have changed uh, a lot. Uh, and yeah, again, that has to, you know, it's interesting to look back on and think, wow, but all this was okay. And of course, this is this is a known controversy. You know, we're not like, being like yeah, wow, yeah. why is nobody talking about this? We're right? not being pop culture detectives. One of the reasons why I chose Six Candles is because I knew the storyline existed. But yeah, it's just, again, crazy to, to see it play out. Uh, and yeah, uh, we're not really adding anything to it, really. But <laughs> yeah, the, the discourse is uh, yeah is known by now. 
Uh, anyway, so the next morning, Sam's mother apologizes to her for forgetting her birthday. Again, this, it, it tries to be a bit wholesome at the end. Everyone goes to the church. Uh, Jake arrives at Sam's house, where a hungover dong says that Sam is getting... A hungover dong. <laughs> Correct, isn't it? Uh, says that Sam is uh, getting married. Uh, Jake finds Caroline and Ted making out in the back of his dad's banged up car, and then Jake and Caroline break up. Again, I, I imagine that was close to happening anyway, because... Yeah, I yeah. don't think that relationship had legs, let's just say. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jake then surprises Sam at the church. Oh, yeah, her sister has, you know, too many period pills or whatever. Um, yeah, so, and she's like, which is very random. Yeah, I, again, it's just kind of like, if this was such a big problem, then it would probably happen more, you know? Like, I I, <laughs> I think she's, she says she, she she took four. Why? Why? Why would she take four? Why not just take one? Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, then Jake uh, then surprises Sam at the church after the wedding and invites her back to his house where he can... Re- oh, no. <laughs> he can have a lovely, happy birthday party with her. Yes, I love this. That night, Jake gives Sam her underwear. How romantic. And a bir- that's, that's a present, yeah. <laughs> and a birthday cake with 16 candles on it. He tells her to make a wish, and she tells him her wish already came true. Uh, then they kiss oh. as the film fades to black isn't that lovely michael yeah yeah you know what it is uh all sins are forgiven john hughes you you really can sell an, an ending no yeah i mean as i've already said <clears throat> the this aspect is just not something i was particularly invested in and uh yeah i couldn't really i couldn't i didn't really care i was like okay fine whatever i guess hopefully uh hopefully he's he's okay to her yeah. Hopefully he's hopefully, okay. To, doesn't get bored. Hopefully she survives. <laughs> he doesn't get bored after two months and just yeah. says to another freshman, "You know what? You can rape her if you want. That's fine." Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, and yeah, I, actually, I don't only do this, but we're actually going to play the last scene uh, over the uh, over the okay, audio over right the audio. now. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy Thanks to listen for to coming you. to my birthday party, oh, Jake Ryan. Thanks for having me at your birthday party, Peter. Make a wish. It's already come true. Here's your present. <laughs> no, Jake, not like this. <laughs> Uh, classic. That, that could have actually happened knowing Jake's tendencies. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. It's kind of funny because Family Guy was right. Like, you know, they, they knew exactly what he would do. <laughs> anyway, let's conclude, Michael. Uh, you go first. Yes. Yeah, so I think we've pretty much said the main things. Obviously, the the thing with the, the rape, which I guess we can continue calling it that since we've been calling it that the whole time, is it's not just the fact that, oh, look, it's a comedy from the 1980s that just hadn't quite worked out the whole consent thing i mean this was back when like there wasn't even such a thing as like marital rape it's just like well if, if you're married to her obviously you can just you know how could you possibly be raping her so you know we, we hadn't quite worked everything out back then whereas now everything's completely fine and we sorted it all out um but it's the fact that it, it, he's like callous and mean about it <laughs> like he's not even it's not even like um because that's the thing, everyone, I guess, talks about the, the geeky guy being like, because he's the person who does some of the acts. But honestly, he, I mean, I'm not going to say what he did was okay, but the person who's the most morally culpable for everything bad that happens really is Jake. And the person who has the worst attitude is Jake. And the problem is that then that butts into the actual substance of the film, which is supposed to be romantic. Uh, the one thing which we didn't really cover in the film, uh, in, in our discussion, but I did mention at the beginning, which is that I did like the relationship with her family like i thought the little talk she had with her dad was fine that slightly elevates the film for me um i'm gonna give the film a low four and basically everything that knocks it down is i like i could maybe even give it a lower rating but i still think it's like like it's got that just generic 1980s oh it's a film about you know high school coming of age blah 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 like there's something to it but there's a lot to object to well I'll say that, yeah, there's a lot to object to because it is a 1980s movie. You know, it's a 1980s yeah. teen comedy and John Hughes helped create this genre, really. Uh, but again, maybe, you know, John Hughes was just, you know, uh, picking from what the what the culture was at the time, how, you know, date rape was viewed, you know, not as seriously as it should, but maybe he was responsible for, you know, creating these problematic, I guess, tropes that exist in movies and potentially went on to exist in society, although maybe that's a bit too harsh. Um, so yeah, I, I think that... Again, yeah, what is interesting is just how crazy and wild this movie is for, you know, like, oh, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a Cinderella story, like a modern Cinderella story uh, mm. about, you know, a normal girl who, you know, gets with a guy she wants uh, and, you know, she's not the ugly sister anymore. And there's just all the racist and the, the slurs and the, yeah, and the date rape stuff. It's just, 
it's kind of, yeah it's 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 crazy but it's a it is a very 1980s movie uh but yeah again it, it, taking out all the 1980s stuff the plot again underdeveloped underwritten you know just no not very good at all the romance is it, it's flat because yeah there doesn't seem to be any reason why these characters would like each other and i guess you could say oh who cares whatever it's you know rom- rom-coms in general they don't have to be like logical but you gotta have a bit of logic just give me a slither of logic why, why does jake like you know sam why yeah i, I can't see any legitimate yeah, reason justify it again yeah just give me a bit you know a slither but there's, there's nothing he hates his bitch girlfriend caroline but Again, that's it's not enough for him to, to want to be with someone else. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, four out of ten for me is uh, is fair. Uh, so, Michael, uh, w- what are we uh, reviewing next time? Well, we've been speaking a lot about R words. We're going to move on to uh, we're going to be continuing that R word theme. What is that R word? It's of course revenge of, of the nerds. Yeah. So we've been selecting and, and reflecting on our first 1984 teen sex comedy movie, uh, <laughs> which is Sixteen Candles. Join us next time for our next teen sex comedy movie uh, from 1984, Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye.